And this is our final time check. The network will go silent for the final one minute. Husker Sports Network programming begins in one minute. Welcome inside the Acres Broadcast Center. I'm Tim Mulhaupt, and this is your Sports Nightly Ticker. Huskers football made coordinators available into the media today. Offensive coordinator Matt Lubick spoke what his players could expect in their battle with number 20 Michigan State coming up this Saturday. Country's far against the run. They do a really good job of uh, eliminating big plays, um, sound, tackle well. It's going to be a big challenge. More from Lubick and defensive coordinator Eric Chenander later in the program. Women's volleyball is on the road to Illinois today as they prepare to take on Northwestern in their return to conference play tomorrow night. HRN pregame coverage begins at 7.30 p.m. with first serve at 8. Prior to pregame, be sure to catch freshman phenom Lexi Rodriguez on Sports Nightly. It's a big win for Huskers women's golf today. The program took home a first-place finish at the Maryland Smith Sunflower Invitational in Manhattan, Kansas. Lindsay Thiel and Nicole Hansen shared individual medalist honors in the win, while Mew Takaka, excuse me, Takaka Hashi and Andrea Velez helped Nebraska's B team secure a first-place finish by six strokes. Over to the world of pro basketball, Ben Simmons made headlines in the NBA today after it was announced the point guard will not report to 76ers training camp. The three-time All-Star has made it clear that he wishes to be traded. In the NHL, the Minnesota Wild just put the final touches on a five-year, $45 million extension for reigning Rookie of the Year forward Kirill Kaprizov, ending a months-long negotiation. As the MLB regular season winds down tonight, the playoff race is heating up and there's plenty of baseball on tap. Um, one final score today, the Tigers topped the White Sox this afternoon 5-3, to three, denying Chicago the AL Central crown for at least another day. The Royals and Indians are underway and Cleveland leads that one 4-0 in the third. The Pirates and Reds are scoreless. That one's just getting done with the first inning, as are the Nationals and Marlins just underway in the first. There's no score in that one either. Rangers at the Yankees is just about set for first pitch, as is Baltimore and Philadelphia. They're just getting first pitch underway. Mets and Red Sox will start at 6:10, as will the Blue Jays and Rays. Twins and Cubs at 6:40, Cards and Brewers at 6:40, and later action will see the Dodgers and Rockies at 7:40, Astros and Angels at 8:38, Braves and Diamondbacks at 8:40, and the Mariners and Athletics finish things out at 8:40 p.m. One actual final game that will be going on late on the West Coast. It'll be the Giants and Padres at 9:10 p.m. That's the ticker. I'm Tim Mulhaupt, and this is Sports Nightly on the Huskers Radio Network. Live inside Memorial Stadium. This is the Huskers Radio Network. Rolling to the right side as Demorat being pressured, throws downfield, passes intercepted, picked off by the Corn Huskers. It's Deontay Williams, second pick of the day, third turnover forced by the Black Shirts, and Nebraska will take over. Third and five from the seven. Pistol set, two wide outs left, lever to the near side. In motion is two ray, snap back, turn. Run the option of the near side. Adrian pitches it back to some more into the five. He is in. Touchdown, Nebraska. It's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cooty on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are. It's a Sports Nightly Tuesday. And I hope you had a good day today. As Tim was telling you, Huskers are getting prepared and ready for Sparty. Michigan State is off to a great start, 3-0, ranked in the national polls. In fact, Nebraska's games that they have left on the schedule, they'll play five ranked teams, starting with Michigan State here this week. It will not be an easy ride for the Huskers from this point on. So we're going to hear from 
both coordinators who met with the media today. And Jessica, the big story was that Gabe Urban is out for the year. He did have surgery today. Feel for that young man. It's never easy to have a season cut short. And I know he was starting to really kind of feel himself in this offense. Yeah, you know, immediately when he went down, everyone just knew that it probably wasn't good. And you just, my heart breaks. I'm sick at my stomach. I tore both my ACLs that ended my career. And I just, it, you know, and you can come back from it, obviously. And it's, you know, you can battle back and come back stronger. But it's just so tough because he was playing so well that day and, and he, we had heard such good things and you know it just it really stinks in the moment for an athlete thinking okay this you know you feel so bad in that moment and so um, a lot of players coming over to console him because and a lot of players that know exactly what that feels like and so it's frustrating and he was so upset but you know knowing how the coaches have talked about uh, Gabe since he stepped on campus there's no doubt in my mind he's going to you know tackle the rehab he's going to come back and he's going to be better than ever it's game four so that rule that you can play up to four games and save a redshirt year is in effect so he will not lose a year of eligibility that's the bright side for him he doesn't want to hear that right now no, he I'm doesn't. Sure he's really devastated by this because now he has a long rehab ahead of him for the next uh, six or seven months. And it's but hard. It's, it I mean, hard. it is really hard to rehab um, from a major surgery like that. And, you know, I also, when he was crutching off the field, uh, I noticed Lincoln Riley went out of his way to go talk to him. I'm not sure if Oklahoma recruited him or not, but um, I just, you know, you're, you, again, you, you can see the potential. And I think other teams can see the potential in him and, and coaches. And so anytime that happens to a player like that, and again, a guy that everybody loves around here, your heart just breaks. And you could just tell how much he means to this team, seeing all the players that were kind of coming up and up to him and talking to him. The good news is I think I like the depth of that room. And Absolutely. I, I think Marquis Stepp, who a lot of people were wondering why he didn't play at all last week, I think he now gets a bigger role. Savion's going to get more carries. We're, we're fine in that spot. You, you'd love to have – him still out there, but you've got adequate people that are ready to jump in there. And we, we've said that since, you know, the summer when and when Ryan Held was talking about how he's going to shake out this competition that you need all you need more than one. You need more than two. You need multiple running backs to go through a season. They just it's just very just highly unlikely that a guy can go through and not get banged up, not get injured. And so you need the depth there. And in a physical le league like the Big Ten. And you know what? It's probably still going to continue to be competitive because there's still a lot of depth there between, um, you know, Marquise and Ramir and uh, Sevion. So it's still going to be a battle for to even see who can maybe step up and fill that role as well. Yeah. So, well, we'll move on. But for Gabe Irvin, it is officially over. Scott Frost didn't have that completely nailed down when he talked yesterday. So they were waiting on some test results. Obviously, they've gotten them back because it was a Ryan Hill did to say today that he is – uh, did have surgery this morning and is out for uh, the season. So uh, football's a rough and tough game. You're going to get casualties throughout the year, and this is one for Gabe Irvin, and uh, we wish him nothing but the best. A lot of times, too, I mean, and I will just say this, I, I've talked to players that when they do go through that and then they have to kind of sit out from the sidelines, and especially for a freshman, you learn a lot about the game because, you know, he's kind of been thrown into it, and as much as, you know, he's handled it, and, and every, everyone said he's not like a freshman. You see it from a different perspective than when you're preparing week in and week out. So it might end up being a positive for him to kind of get to watch from the sidelines and really get a grasp of how this college football thing works. Well, and he's now played, so he right. understands what it is. So now he can sit back and do what you're saying, rehab, and also know in the back of his mind, know, I can do this. I can do this. I played four games. One against a really good team in Oklahoma. So I know what it takes to be good at this level, uh, but it is. It's a long haul for him. Doubt that he's back for spring ball. That'll be close because these ACLs, they're turning people around in seven, eight months now, but it's probably not going to happen for him in spring. I think the fast side is six months. That's like the probably the fastest that you yeah, can come back. Be close. So. Um, It'll be close. But, and you don't want to rush that either. Right. So I think you probably would take your time and maybe by the end of spring he's back, but. Um, you know, he'll take care of his business. He'll do everything that he's supposed to do, and he'll come back. There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. All right, so that was the tough news that was delivered earlier today about that. Um, we've got coming up tomorrow night, we do have Husker Volleyball. I wonder if, 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 if there's some concern among Husker fans. That team has dropped their last three, all the ranked teams, uh, but a couple of home losses for this team. I, I kind of felt like John Cook was a little agitated, I guess is the right word, yesterday at his press conference. Uh, Tim mentioned that they were off to, to Northwestern. Well, they'll play tomorrow night. Um, I, I guess I'm not 
I'm not concerned it's too strong, but you're kind of going, well, they do need to kind of figure it, figure something out and settle on a group to play with. When we went out to practice yesterday, Body, the SID, was working on some notes. It was the first time, I think, since 1991 that Nebraska had lost three straight games in the non-conference. So, That's a long time. you know, I, I mean, that just goes to show you just the dominance of this program. But, you know, I think probably a couple of those losses, you know, we, we heard Coach Cook afterwards and wasn't necessarily too upset about it. They played hard, still trying to figure things out. But um, I think by, by the third loss, he, yeah, like you said, it, it was a little bit different tone. And it was pretty tense out at practice yesterday. And, and you know, some players staying, getting some extra work in. Um, but, yeah, I think now that you go to Big Ten play and it is a battle night in and night out, I think uh, he will want them to, to solidify that lineup and move forward with that and, and try to get them going in the right direction. Yeah. So a lot of times Tuesday nights we have John Cook, not tonight because they're traveling. So his volleyball show will be Thursday. It'll be hour one. So it'll be during this time on Thursday night show right before our football show for the week. So. Um, yeah, that's why there's no volleyball show coming your way tonight. Buckle up, put that phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Finished up the show last night, went home, and then flipped on the Monday Night Football game. But I didn't watch the main channel, Jessica. I watched the Mannings. Oh, yeah. Have you seen them oh, yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's really good. Very good. Very good. And then it's also... Um I mean, then you see them blowing up on Twitter and people talking about it and pointing things out. Like, um, I think it's Dan, uh, what's Dan or, or, or Velsky or whatever. He was saying that watch Peyton Manning's eyes when he's watching the play. They're moving all over the place. Even if, just watching a game, trying to be an analyst, he's trying to soak up all the information. Just, you know, they have so much knowledge. And then they get funny stories out, like, you know, um, who was it, Brett Favre, that yeah, his, Favre his on last side. uncle's yeah. bar, you know, that he said, you know, if you wanted to come into the bar, I could have just walked you in from the front front door. So, yeah, they tell funny stories, but then they're also kind of breaking things down that you're like, oh, wow, like seeing it from one of the best to ever do it's per perspective. So, yeah, it's awesome. I it's, bet the main broadcast is losing a lot of ratings. It has to be, but ESPN doesn't care because they've got both products. So right. it's on both their channels, so they don't care because they're probably running the – I think they might be running the same breaks even in their halftime shows the same uh, from what they're doing there. Last night they were making fun of Favre because he was supposed to be on the first half. They didn't get him to the second half. They're like, well, the Wi-Fi must be down in Mississippi. <laughs> Couldn't get him on. So, I, you know, my question for Husker fans, if Nebraska football wanted to do that, who would be the fun two guys for you to sit back and watch a Husker game and give you their thoughts? There'll be a lot of people that uh, will have some thoughts on this, but I'd love to hear some suggestions from people about if Nebraska had a stream like that with two people, two former Huskers, uh, two former players, who would you like? Who would you be entertained by watching uh, watching them watch a Husker game and get their comments off of? I think I think this is I think this is going to be something that other sports are going to do. I really do. Oh yeah, you you would think so. The old, the hard part is though that's like one night a week. It's Monday night. There's one game on. Yep. You know, but um, I even take it to what two players on this current team would you well, like sure. to see break sure. it down? Sevion Morrison has got to be in that conversation Could. for me. He's well, hilarious. And Casey Rogers wants to be a sportscaster, yes, yep. so I think he would be in that mix. Yep. What about the guy we're going to hear from later in the program tonight, and Garrett uh, Nelson? Yeah, he's a, he's a great one too. Um, yeah, there's a lot of good talkers. JoJo has a good perspective on. Yeah. He knows the game very very well. Um, obviously, Adrian is going to know the game in a different way. Um, He'd be too nice though. Yeah. <laughs> He wouldn't, he wouldn't, he, uh, yeah, but no, there, there's a handful of good yeah. candidates to be oh, able yeah. to do that. It's like, do you want funny and entertaining or do you want informative and breaking things down? Absolutely. Because there's both. Yeah. Take your pick. It's, uh, it's so creative and I missed it last week and I had a bunch of people saying, Greg, you got to watch it. They're just hilarious. And so I, I got a chance to see the whole second half last night when we got wrapped up here and they're right. It was really good. Last week I guess I had Barkley. For a segment. Charles Barkley was with him. Oh, now, yeah. My goodness. Oh, yeah. And then at the end, Russell Wilson came on throughout yeah. the overtime. And so that was fantastic hearing Russell and Peyton going back and forth on, hey, what are you going to do here? Like, yeah. so, you know, they got in. Um, I'm sure they'll get in all the characters. Uh, Travis Kelsey was on last week, too, which is, you know, is always a character. So, you know, it's a good mix of kind of entertaining, telling stories, but also like breaking things down. So it's fantastic. Really good stuff. Folks, if you haven't seen it, I, I think they're doing it every week, right? Yeah, they are. Okay, so next Monday night, you'll have a chance to do that. And 
uh, go see the the Manning brothers, Eli and Peyton, and they play off each other real. Peyton Manning's really funny. Yeah, he has a comedic bone in him that's really interesting. Yeah, and Eli kind of has been known for being a little a little bit less, I guess, uh, personality wise, little little blah. But I, his brother brings it out of him. Together, they kind of have, uh, you know feed off of each other a little bit. He's kind of shown a little bit of more personality too. Yeah. All right, you have some thoughts on that? Love to hear them. 402-413-2400 with a call or a text. Here's what we have tonight. We're going to be hearing from both coordinators, recap what they said coming up in a little bit. We didn't get to Garrett Nelson last night because we had a bunch of calls, which is great. We loved hearing from all the folks last night after that Oklahoma game. We'll get to Garrett tonight. We're also going to talk to Husker softball coach Ron Ravel. They've got another inter-squad scrimmage on Thursday, and then they'll play Oklahoma, Omaha of the Mavericks in a doubleheader on Sunday, their first of their fall ball games. So we'll get an update on Husker softball coming up in hour number two as well. There's a good one right there. Oh, uh, I don't know that that would be <laughs> the, the, on the text line. I'd like to see Jason, Peter, and Richie Incognito call a game. I don't think that would pass the censors. <laughs> I, I think you would have more beeps than actual words being pronounced if you put those two guys uh, in there. Hey, visit a participating Agco dealer between now and November 12th and enter for a chance to win a pair of tickets to the Nebraska Iowa game in November here in Lincoln. That's going to include a pregame tailgate party for you. See participating Agco locations across Nebraska, and you could be a winner this season. Back with more Sports Highlight coming up. Stay up to date with the most current and latest news by following the Huskers on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more. These social media homes provide the fastest daily updates on everything surrounding Nebraska athletics, including game times, results, ticket promotions, prize giveaways, and more. Log on to also follow several sport-specific pages and Husker head coaches. Join today and interact with thousands of Husker fans around the world. Visit huskers.com slash social media to see all of our accounts. Don't let the cold winter worry you. As Nebraska's leading supplier of propane, you can count on Sap Brothers to keep your family warm this winter. You're like family, and your safety is the number one priority of Sap Brothers. When it comes to your propane needs, Sap Brothers has you covered. Visit www.sapbros.net slash petroleum to find your local Sap Brothers propane expert. Celebrating 50 years of fueling America's heartland and welcoming guests, Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. From vintage sneakers to bacon-scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory-trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next-level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Double espresso for Matt, large ice mocha for Greg, $2,022 for Katie. Oh, oops. Everybody's mind is on the Nebraska Lottery's Powerball's Rockin' 15 promotion. Until September 25th, buy a Powerball with PowerPlay ticket and enter for a chance to be one of 15 to win $2,022 and a chance to win $1 million. Sorry for the mix-up, Katie. Here's your latte. Forget the coffee. Where's my $2,022? Powerball top prize odds, one in 292 million. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. 
ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice-cold Bud Light. Welcome back to Football Sports Fans. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Here we go again. The celebrating, the accolades. Ever since we added Marco to our team, our technology can't lose. Day after day, success after success, Marco's made our business IT a force to be reckoned with. The only drawback of being technology all-stars is keeping champagne away from the electronics. <sighs> Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. It's game on at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont, featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location or check out our full inventory at SidDillonBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team www.iowaworks.gov We're back in our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Tuesday night. On our text line, we're talking about the Manning broadcast on ESPN2 last night. Who would be good for Huskers? Rudy in Florida said, what about Barry Alvarez and Turner Gill? That's an interesting name. You go, Barry played for Nebraska in the 60s, obviously the longtime Wisconsin coach, and Turner, who was a great quarterback here, and then on Tom Osborne's staff for a long time. That'd be interesting to hear, hear that. All right, uh, we're going to hear now from a couple of the coordinators. Matt Lubick and Eric Chenander met with the media today, and we talked about in the open that Gabe Irvin is now officially out for the season with a, a leg injury and, and he had surgery earlier today, Matt Lubick was asked to talk about depth now at that position. I, I, well, we knew we were going to have an injury at running back. That's just the nature of the position. Guys get nicked up at that position. So, you know, we feel like we got four guys that can play. Um, and each week in, in practice, we can kind of say, hey, who's practicing the best? And it's, it's really that simple. The guy that practices the best is going to play the most. And then when a guy gets in a game and if he gets on a roll and starts running the ball really hard and he has the hot hand, uh, then he'll, he'll take most of the carries. And, Jessica, that dovetails into Ryan Held, who did say today, he goes, he thought he would play Marquis Step last week, but he said Ramir kind of got into a role. We got into a rhythm with him, and we just kept going with him. That a lot of times is so much a part of it. Who has the hot hand, you know? And... Uh, and as we talked about yesterday, maybe Ramirez's speed was, uh, you know, matched up better with, with Oklahoma. So we've seen what Marquis Step can, can do. So it's not like, um, you know, it's, it's, he couldn't do what, what is needed. But, you know, and, and I think, too, is, as I've said throughout the, you know, season, is that it's how you handle your business in practice, too, and, and are you taking care of business. So um, it's still, like I said uh, in the first segment, going to be a competition and a battle between the guys that are still in that room. And I still think it may change week to week. Yeah. In a way, unless somebody just goes out there and 
tears it up for a couple straight games. Well, it was sure good to see Travis Vokalek back out there. Made a big catch in the game. I know the Huskers feel like he's by far their best blocking tight end and should really help the run game as the season goes along. Matt Lubick was asked about the benefits of getting 83 back on the field. Sure, yeah, bo both him and Austin and, uh, you know, Chris Hickman's played really well, but when you have a guy like Travis that comes back, he just gives you so much more in the run game and pass game. You know, he, he blocks like an offensive tackle, uh, but he has the ability to split out wide and, and, and run routes like a receiver because he has great speed and, and great ball skills. So it just lets you do so many more things when you have that, when you have him in your game plan. You know, and, and it, it frees up. We can do more things with two tight ends and even some three tight end sets because, you know, Austin's one of our better players and, and Chris Hickman. And, and Chancellor Brew, Brewington has been a great surprise. So we, we've got four guys that we can kind of mix match, put guys in there. But to answer your question in particular, Travis brings a level of physicality that is different. And it, and it showed up in the game against Oklahoma. Didn't really, I didn't notice, maybe you did field level. I didn't notice him being gimpy at all. It no. looked like he was pretty much full strength. Yeah, it was. And in the game before Buffalo, like I said, he was out there going through full warm-ups. I think he probably could have played then, but, but what's the need? You know, you can save him and, and have him be ready to go for Oklahoma. So he's probably been going through workouts and, and kind of they've been able to bring him along slowly because they have some depth there and um, haven't needed him. But, yeah, and going through warm-ups on Saturday, I was sp uh, paying specifically close attention to him. And, yeah, he looked like he had been playing the whole season. Now, maybe he was sucking air at some point in time, and I couldn't tell, but it was just great having him out there. Now he's got one under his belt. You think you feel like he should be ready to roll. You know, I, the fans have been asking, when are we going to see more Omar Manny? When are we going to see more Xavier Betts? Well, we did in the Oklahoma game, and both of them had big plays in that game. Here's Matt Lubick talking about the development of those two particular wide receivers. Yeah, I know those guys have done a good job. Uh, you know, they, yeah, they know, they know the whole game plan. We, we trust them. We, and we still feel we have, even though, you know, Oliver hasn't played, and we're hoping we get, to get him back this week, but uh, we, we feel like we have pretty good depth, and we feel like we can rotate a lot of guys at that position, which keeps guys fresh, lets other guys play well. And some of the reason those guys made plays is because they're fresh when their number came up. And so we, we want to continue to do that. Uh, and I like the way those two guys in particular are progressing. We talked about Omar last night about how he met with the media and talked about how he has struggled with mental health issues since he got to Nebraska a year ago, and that's what's prevented him from really being out on the field more than he has to this point in time. Here's Matt Lubick talking more about Omar and the issues he's dealt with. That's awesome. You know, he's, he's worked really hard. Uh, you know, last year was a tough year on everybody with, for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, and... Uh, you know, to see him battle back from that physically and mentally as a coach, that, that makes you feel really good and really proud. And, and uh, to see his confidence and to see the excitement, you know, when he starts having some success. And we, we kind of knew is once he started having success that he would, he'd be a lot more confident. Um, but, yeah, I'm very proud of him. And uh, yeah, I think he's going to keep getting better and better. I think he's a guy that needed to kind of have a little bit of success in a game and then it could really snowball from there. But... You know, just so courageous of him to speak out about some of the things that he's been going through mentally. He's posted about it on his social media. I know he's wearing the uh, wristbands that are um, in support of the, um, the quarterback at Washington State. The I just blanked on his name. Uh, Tyler Helinski. Yeah. Yeah. Tyler Helinski. And Helinski's hope is, is what it is. And so, um, you know, he's been outspoken about it on social media. And, you know, I think he's just worked through it. And... Um, a lot of those stories kind of come out about you don't talk about it and then you kind of bottle it up and then it kind of comes out uh, to fruition in a, in a negative way. And so, you know, I think he's dealt with a lot of the things that he's battled mentally and internally. And, and it's, I think he's scratching the surface. I think he could burst out in a huge way. You're working on more of kind of an expanded story of this. We've had Dr. Haskell on, we've had Dr. Woods on of talking about this, but this is becoming more and more of an issue in our society, and in, in the sports world is focusing some spotlights on this. I'm glad that we're doing this. I think it's a huge step forward. And Nebraska has a great psychology department. You mentioned Brett Haskell, the, the team that is in place here. It is so important. I mean, and it's, you just never know what kids are going through. And there's a couple of those stories that we're about to start working on for Mental Health Awareness Week. And 
you know, it, it will really, I think, change a perspective if you have doubts about what these kids might be going through. It's more than just, oh, you know, a, a little thing here or there. There are some deep-rooted issues that you don't know what these student-athletes might be battling through. And, you know, you got to work through it. And, and I think Omar certainly has. And I, I hope, you know, just what a great story, as Coach Frost said yesterday, it would be if, you know, he could really break out and continue to reach his full potential. Because I know there he has it in there. He could be a huge weapon. You can just tell. You just, he just drips athleticism when yep. he's out there on that field. All right, that's it for, for Coach Lubick. Now let's go to defense and Eric Chenander. And, and this topic has come up a time or two here on Sports Night. And that's about the team's tackling through four games. Here's the defensive coordinator's thoughts on that. Um, the first three, I thought we tackled really well. The last game, a little disappointed um, in the tackling. And I think we need to get that cleaned up. Uh, now, obviously, they got some really good players they had in space, so you're going to have a, a, a few extra misses, but a little too many for me. Um, and I think, I think we're a much better tackling team than we showed last week. And Matt and I talked about this last night, that, hey, Oklahoma's got great athletes. They're a little harder to tackle than some of the teams that Nebraska's played to this point in time. But Eric Chenander's not going to give up. He's not going to give an inch on that for the guys, and I'm okay with that as well. One thing, Jessica, and I know people who like Big Macs are not happy. We haven't had a sack since the first game of the year. I, I kind of thought about that. I saw your, the commercial on last night, and I'm like, Big Mac sack. We need one of those. Haven't had one since Illinois. So people are hungry. So we here's, need to get one of those. Here's Eric Chenander talking about the pass rush for his group. You know, right now we're doing a much better job of keeping the quarterback in the pocket. Um, obviously, the sack's disappointing. Um, but when you look at it globally, you know, there's been a lot of times where the guy's getting the ball out because he's getting pressured. Um, we're doing a good job of getting our hands and throwing lanes. Um, you can affect the quarterback in a lot of different ways. You can affect the quarterback by hits on the quarterback, hurries on the quarterback, uh, crushing the pocket and making him throw it out of the well. Um, and then obviously when you get sacks, that's a, that's a really big factor. Um, but I think we've done a good job with everything, except for we haven't got to the quarterback enough. Uh, you know, Spencer Rattler did a nice job of, he always does a great job of getting out of the pocket. Um, but the good thing is I think we, we kept him, you know, for the most part behind the line of scrimmage. He had a couple nice scrambles. Um, but behind the line of scrimmage and making him throw balls that maybe he didn't want to throw. Uh, they did a good job in protection. They kept the back end most of the day on our guys. Uh, but we all know we got to get sacks. Getting home. They've had a hard time getting home. But he's right. They've also, I think, made quarterbacks throw hurry passes, which mm -hmm. are incompletions or throw it out of bounds, those type of things. To me, those are almost as good as a sack. Obviously, a sack gets the crowd more fired up and you lose yardage. But... Those other things are important, too. You heard, we heard Coach Schneider today. We heard the players yesterday. And, again, it's kind of the same messaging. You know, you hear what the players are saying. You're going to hear from Garrett Nelson in a bit. Saying the same thing about, you know, they know that they left a lot out there. As good as they played, they're not patting themselves on the back because they do know that they missed. They should have had a couple more sacks. That's what Garrett Nelson is going to point that out here. You know, when they went back and watched the film, as good as they played, they know that the potential there is so much greater for this defense. They could play way better. And so that's what's scary about this team is that, you know, that defense is far from peaking uh, their best right now. Speaking of that, that's a perfect segue into this clip from the coordinator. He was asked, we're hearing your players say they know they can be better. You have to like to hear that. Yeah, I think that, you know, you, you fall into a trap a little bit sometimes, right, when – Somebody says, well, hey, good job. You guys played, played well against Oklahoma. And you can be like, yeah, we did. Or you can look at the film and be objective and say, that wasn't as good as we are. Because we had a chance to do some really special things, I think, on Saturday. They did play good. The kids played really hard. The assistant coaches and the players did a great job in preparation this week. Um, the kids' effort was un unbelievable. But I think they all know that there's more out there. We could have fit a couple things better. We could have tightened things up a little bit. You know, we could have got off the field a little earlier on that last drive. But th th those kids realize that when you, when you set out a goal and you want to do something, you can't just be satisfied with you guys played good. You know, we need to get this thing airtight. Jessica, I like it when 
The coaches echo the players, and the players echo the coaches. And there's a lot of that going on right now. These defensive players are bought into Eric Chenander. There is no doubt about it. They and, and every single one of them say what he says. And so, to me, I found, you know, throughout the history of covering athletes, when they are repeating what their coaches are telling them in meetings, it's most of the time they're, they're locked in and bought into to the message that's being uh, sent to them and the, the message is being received. So... Yeah, I mean, I think they, they love to play for, for Coach Shenander and this defensive staff. I mean, even just listening into the um, huddles with Coach Toyote, uh, how much those defensive line guys love playing for him. And um, so, yeah, I think absolutely this defense is um, they're They've already played really well, and they've been such a positive spot for this football team. But they're, as we've heard, nowhere near what they feel like they could be. Nebraska 811 says go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have – your utility line's marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. We continue hearing from Eric Chenander. Let's turn the page to Michigan State. Kenneth Walker has been an amazing surprise for Sparty. A running back transfer from Wake Forest. He's averaging 164 on the ground per game. He's really chewed it up early on in the season. Here's Eric Chen Chenander talking about the talented running back for Michigan State. Obviously, he's a... Uh... You know, he's a put together really well, uh, explosive kid. He's going to challenge your leverage. You know, and, and some of these guys, um, you know, they want to get to the edge and get the ball up the field. He wants to challenge your leverage and make a cut and, and really go. Uh, hasn't been a lot of single tackles on this guy, so a lot of hats need to get to the football. Um, but obviously, he's leading the NCAA in rushing. I think he's got like nine yards of carry, so uh, he's a really good football player. What was Garrett Nelson's comment yesterday? Somebody said, hey, you're playing a guy who's, like, leading the country in rushing. What did what he, Garrett say? He was Good like, for him or something like that. Oh, that's that's sick. Good for him or something <laughs> like that, yeah. <laughs> to me, what's, what's scarier than the total yards is that, that nine yards a, a pop. Bruh. That's what's kind of uh, scary. That stat's scarier to me than the total yards. That's uh, that's Mike Rozier-like kind of carries for that. All right, Peyton Thorne. A lot of people may go, who's the ex? That's the quarterback for Michigan State. He won the job at a battle over a guy in Russo who transferred from Temple, who a lot of people thought would be the starting quarterback. What about Peyton Thorne? Here's the breakdown from Eric Shenander. Yeah, well, I mean, you look at, talk about stats, right? The one thing I look at right away is how many tugs, how many touchdowns, how many interceptions? He's got nine and zero. So he's efficient with the football. Uh, you know, the other thing about him is he's, he doesn't make mistakes with the football. You know, he would rather take a sack or, or throw it away, which is, you know, he's a good decision maker. And then the other thing is, is you look at him play and you think, well, he's not that fast, but then he pulls one down or he, he keeps one off a, off a run. He's not a huge quarterback run game, but when he does keep one, you're like, oh, he can roll a little bit, you know? So uh, I, I have a lot of respect for him and what they do with him and their system. So there you go. There's a quick rundown on Michigan State. We'll have more as we get closer to game time. But they're off to a good start. One at Northwestern, one at Miami. So they're 3-0 with two road wins already this year. This will be, this will be a challenge. Yeah, it will be. But I also don't know how good Miami is either. I know they were ranked and, um, you know, a lot of expectations for them. But Derek King is not fully healthy. And Miami's a different football team when he's fully healthy and when he's not fully healthy. And so... Not taking anything away from Michigan State, but I don't know how well that what that score would look like with a healthy Derek King. Good point. All right, phone lines open for you, 402-413-2400. Anything that uh, caught your attention, hearing from the coordinators, Lubick and Shenander tonight. They always meet with the media on Tuesdays. Our Sports Highly Hotline is brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations simplified car buying to save you time shop finance and buy online at woodhouse.com back with more sports highly coming up double espresso for matt large ice mocha for greg two thousand twenty two dollars for katie oh, oops everybody's mind is on the nebraska lottery's powerball's rockin 15 promotion until september 25th buy a powerball with power play ticket and enter for a chance to be one of 15 to win two thousand twenty two dollars and a chance to win one million dollars Sorry for the mix-up, Katie. Here's your latte. Forget the coffee. Where's my $2,022? 
Powerball top prize odds, one in 292 million. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit to Toast Subaru at 27th Street and Jamie Lane in Lincoln or to ToastSubaru.com. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the field, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant decal brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with decal. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. For the fourth year in a row, the University of Nebraska system ranked as one of the top 100 institutions worldwide in earning U.S. patents. The NU system was granted 38 patents, and of those, 27 were awarded to UNL researchers. The result? new startup companies, jobs, and university licensed products that grow Nebraska's economy. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple stack corn hybrids and Enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. Do all of that and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections, when it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment. And you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in, get out, and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Shop with confidence at Woodhouse Ford. Take advantage of our current offers and vast inventory selection with features you want at a smart price. Schedule a test drive today or shop online with our streamlined sales process. We make it easy to shop, finance, and purchase in person or online at woodhouseford.com. Choose your experience and find your next vehicle at Woodhouse Ford in Blair, Omaha, or Plattsmouth. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple stack corn hybrids and Enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. Do all of that and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. Here is a before winter to-do list from JTech Construction. Let's start with windows. Triple pane window technology has saved homeowners countless dollars on heating and cooling bills. 
Siding serves a crucially important purpose, protecting your home and insulating it from adverse weather conditions. And don't forget about your roof. Designing your roof should be simple and painless, and JTEC offers several payment plan options. One more thing on your to-do list, call JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. This season, share Valentino's tailgater tradition with our big red double jumbo deal and get two one-topping jumbo pizzas for only $17.79. Order yours online at valentinos.com. Valentinos, the official pizza of the Huskers. Go big red. Greg Sharp. Jessica Cootie with you here on a Tuesday night. A couple more suggestions for Huskers to uh, watch a football game and do what the Mannings have been doing. Um, I'd like to hear Trev Alberts and Dave Remington analyze the games. That'd be awesome. That'd yeah. be really cool to see that. Rudy in Florida says, what about Barry Alvarez and Turner Gill? Interesting combination. Our good friend Carla says, how about Larry the Cable Guy and Jeremiah Searles? I love that. That's, that's <laughs> the one right there, Carla. That is the one. And then she also said, John Cook and John Baylor. Oh, my gosh. That thing <laughs> would get off the rails if those yes. two. Yeah, when I was filling in for JB, uh, Coach Cook was saying that sometimes they'll just start talking about uh, baseball oh, yeah. or something. Was If it there gets... was a baseball game on, they'd be talking about that, and but you Coach never know. Coach Cook used to be a high school football coach. Yeah. He loves to talk football with people. I asked him to stay on with you the other day. He didn't want to. <laughs> Let's go to Waverly and Bob. Good evening, Bob. Welcome to Sports Nightly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm starting to see some uh, flashes of possibly a good team there. But, you know, I was disappointed in the first two plays. I don't put some linemen jumping offside. And do they still run stadium steps when they make mistakes like that, you know? I don't know. I'm sure there's some kind of thing in practice that they have to do some up and downs, maybe something like right. that. Right. It I, just seems like they need some more discipline. I mean, this is like, you know, what, the fourth year and the same stuff. You know, and, you know though, Bob – up until the Oklahoma game, we really hadn't seen that. We really hadn't seen many procedure penalties. Yeah, but anytime we get in a big game, it, it seems like this is what happens. We beat ourselves with silly mistakes. I mean, that crowd noise, you got to prepare for. That's obvious. You go in a hostile environment. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's the same thing. Four few, I mean, I'm glad to see some improvement, but, I mean, that has to change. It's, it continues year after year. I mean, you got to discipline them. You don't see that with some of the top teams. They don't make mistakes like that. They don't kill themselves. You know, Oklahoma, you know, may have one or two, but not, nothing like we did. And it'd be nice just to see some more discipline out there on that line, and maybe that's what it takes, uh, more discipline and practice, having run those steps. Yep. But it's good to see some uh, improvement. Thanks. Yep. Okay, appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, uh, we had not really seen many false starts up until that game. I, I think the crowd noise had both – Nebraska had eight penalties, 70 yards. Oklahoma had seven penalties, 70 yards. But Oklahoma didn't have How the many on starts. The f- but they're the home team, and the crowd's not revving up when they're right. snapping the ball. How many on the first drive? There was four, weren't there? Yeah. So um, they were almost on the re- early part of the yeah, game. Yeah, and that was it's- what was brought up in the in the timeout with Greg Austin, is that the crowd noise, you got to settle in. They got a little bit caught up in that, and then I think they kind of figured it out after that. I think Sichterman had one later. Yeah, I remember and then right. Cam's one that shouldn't have been, right? Or, no, 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 uh, who, I don't know, but. Yeah, I just remember that I think Sichterman had one later, but you're right, three or four of those were right away, Yeah, and then it did, did get cleaned up. Hey, buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Went long in the last segment. Need to take a break. We're back with Jeremy coming up next. Stay up to date with the most current and latest news by following the Huskers on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more. These social media homes provide the fastest daily updates on everything surrounding Nebraska athletics, including game times, results, ticket promotions, prize giveaways, and more. Log on to also follow several sport-specific pages and Husker head coaches. Join today and interact with thousands of Husker fans around the world. Visit huskers.com slash social media to see all of our accounts. 
Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. From vintage sneakers to bacon-scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory-trained techs. Visit Ford Blue advantage.com today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and zone six in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. You are what drives us. Chevy, find new roads. Welcome back inside of our Acres Broadcast Center, Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres Solutions for every field. 402 413 2400. Let's go to the phones. Jeremy, you're up next here on Sports Island. Good evening. Jeremy, you there? Oh, yeah, sorry. It's all right. I think I was sleeping here. Anyway, <laughs> first of all, I got to say I love the show. It's my go-to radio station on my way home from Good. work. Love that. Um, you guys have great, great insight. I love how you guys are just diehard Husker all the way. A um, couple questions. One, I was reading an article today about Scott Frost coaching a little tougher. Uh, do you think that's a good thing? Where do you think that's coming from? Uh, you think that's like the last call I was talking about, needing a little bit more discipline? Yeah. You think, think that's so. where that's coming from a little bit? No, I think that's very astute of you. I think that's exactly right. I think Coach Frost is like, all right, we need to lock this it, thing in. And I get, even Austin Allen said this Monday, he goes, he, Coach Frost was different with us last week. He, he was a little harder edge to him last week. Is it less tolerant Austin, of the mistakes? Uh, Sorry, go that ahead. Austin Allen, that Austin Allen interview was perfect. I love that kid. I, I love this team. I love the attitude that's coming from this team. I mean, the like – the they're so tired of failing, and they're right there. I mean, oh, I love it. I love this team so much. I just I hope the best for them, and we're right in position right now with these next eight games coming up. We could put ourselves in the top 15 pretty, pretty easy, and I, I just hope we're ready and up for the challenge. Love it, Jeremy. Appreciate it. Thanks for the phone call. Going back to, to Bob's call in the last segment, Jessica, about the, the penalties and the discipline. Nebraska had, had eight penalties for the games. Two of them they had before they even snapped the football on offense. And the two false starts right out of the gate. Yeah, and then the the rest of that drive, there was four. And then so the half one, the penalties of the game were in the first drive of the game. And then the one on Camp Jurgens called later, a lot of people thought it was questionable. Yeah. And then there was two defensive penalties. And so there was really one offensive line penalty. I mean, I guess you can say two if you count cams. I mean, you have to. It was called the rest of the game after that first drive. Yeah. I mean, I, to me, you know, and I, you're, Bob's right. we got to get more discipline in that thing. But big game, big environment, most hostile group this team has played in front of in two years. Yes. Because Illinois was not that hostile. And last year we played in front of nobody. So I think the anxiety showed in that first drive of those false starts. You know, and I thought it was pretty telling. Some of the defensive linemen came over to talk to the offensive line after that first drive. And I think it was Ty Robinson said, hey, you guys are better than that. 
And I just think they settled in after that. And, um, yeah, I think they know that, and they have to lock it in. And they did. You know, after that first drive, they were not happy with it either, and they had to get smarter, and they figured out the crowd, and they were better after that. They were much, much better after that. Dennis on our text line said, what do you think of Barry Switzer and Tom Osborne for Oh, answers? my. <laughs> you know, last week they did. Those two sat and watched the 71 game, and it was really good. Is that still up on Huskers.com? Yes, it's Is on it? the Facebook page. Oh, folks, you need to go see that. Go go watch that. Those two guys, who aren't young men, either one of them anymore, they're both in their 80s, they remembered so much detail about that game. It's amazing. It's like I can't remember details like that from last week. No. Let alone, uh, you know, 50 years 50 ago. 50 years ago. Buckle up. Put it. Put the phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. One hour in the books. We're going to hear from Garrett Nelson and Husker softball coach Rhonda Ravel. They're playing UNO on Sunday, one of their fall ball matchups. All that and more coming up. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Shop Woodhouse Chevy Buick in Missouri Valley, Iowa, and experience the Woodhouse difference, where our sales staff is here, ready to help you find your perfect new car, truck, or SUV. And with over 100 new vehicles on our lot with more arriving daily, we're sure to have something for you. From the Buick Encore to our heavy-duty trucks, we have the best selection available. Find new roads and shop all of our inventory and offers at WoodhouseChevy.com or visit us at our dealership for a test drive today. Making car buying easier. This is Woodhouse. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill, see you there for the game. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team www.iowaworks.gov <sighs> Sometimes being an office printer feels like I'm competing in an Olympic sport. Thankfully, I have Marco's managed print services on my team. Marco's game plan helps me make big plays while saving big bucks. And Marco's lightning fast tech support gets me back in the game fast. <sighs> I'm up. Find out what your printers could be saying with Marco's managed print services at marconet.com
Welcome inside the Acres Broadcast Center. I'm Tim Mulhaupt, and this is your Sports Nightly Ticker. Huskers football made coordinators available to the media today. Offensive coordinator Matt Lubick spoke about what his players can expect in their battle with the 20th-ranked Michigan State Spartans coming up this Saturday. Um, I think they're a top 30 defense in the country as far against the run. They do a really good job of uh, eliminating big plays, um, sound, tackle will. It's going to be a big challenge. Women's volleyball is on the road to Illinois today as they prepare to take on Northwestern in their return to conference play tomorrow night. HRN pregame coverage begins at 7.30 p.m. with first serve at 8. Prior to pregame, be sure to catch freshman phenom Lexi Rodriguez on Sports Nightly. It's a big win for Huskers women's golf today. The program took home a first-place finish at the Maryland Smith Sunflower Invitational in Manhattan, Kansas this morning. Lindsay Thiel and Nicole Hansen shared individual medalist honors in the win, while Miu Takahashi and Andrea Velez helped Nebraska's B team secure first place by six strokes. Over to the world of pro basketball, Ben Simmons made his headlines today in the NBA after it was announced the point guard will not report to 76ers training camp. The three time All Star has made it clear that he wishes to be traded. In the NHL, the Minnesota Wild just announced a five year, $45 million contract for reigning rookie of the year forward Kirill Kaprizov, ending a months long standoff in negotiations. As the MLB regular season winds down, the playoff race and the spots available four are, are heating up as there are plenty of baseball games on tap tonight. One final, the Tigers topped the White Sox and that was a 5-3 score and that denies the White Sox the Central Division title at least for another day. The Royals and Indians are already in the seventh. Cleveland leads that one forward to nothing. The Pirates and Reds are tied at one in the fourth. The Nationals and Marlins remain scoreless in the fifth. The Rangers and Yankees have the Yanks up one nothing in the third. The Orioles and Phillies are still scoreless in the third, as are the Mets and Red Sox. Blues and Jays, Blue Jays and Rays, that one says Toronto up 1-0 in the third. The Twins are up 2-0 over the Cubs in the first. And just underway, the Cards also with an early lead. They lead 1-0 over the Brewers. Later action tonight, we'll see the Dodgers and Rockies at 7.40. Astros and Angels at 8.38 p.m. Braves and Diamondbacks at 8.40. Mariners and Athletics at 8.40. And the Giants and Padres round things out at 9.10 p.m. That's the ticker. I'm Tim Mulhaupt, and this is Sports Nightly on the Huskers Radio Network. Live inside Memorial Stadium, this is the Huskers Radio Network. Rolling to the right side as Demorat being pressured, throws downfield, passes intercepted, picked off by the Cornhuskers. It's Deontay Williams, second pick of the day, third turnover forced by the Blackshirts, and Nebraska will take over. Third and five from the seven. Pistol set, two wideouts left, Lever to the near side. In motion is two Ray, snap back, turn, run the option to the near side. Adrian pitches it back to Samore to the five. He is in. Touchdown, Nebraska. It's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are at Sports Nightly on a Tuesday night. Hope you had a good day today. Beautiful outside right now. Real comfortable. Feel of fall in the air. I'm happy. I'm happy. I know. You're loving this. Um, you were asking for it to cool off. It has. Yeah. I had to... Put a sweatshirt on this morning walking my dog. It was a little chilly. I think we got down to 50 last night. Wow. And it's supposed to not be, it's supposed to be rainy and kind of chilly on Saturday? Could be, could be a little rain in the air. 64 for the high. So a night game, it'll be in the upper 50s probably. When we but it's not supposed to rain at night, right? I don't think so. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Grass field, you don't want rain coming no. down. Tear that whole thing up. Here's one of my, fu my funny stories about East Lansing. I think it's the first time I was there to call football. And so I'm standing in the back of the press box and looking out. And kind of out where we're looking at, at the building going up here, they had an outdoor pool. <laughs> and this was a November game. So it's like 38 degrees or uh -huh. something. And I'm like, there are people swimming in there. They were swimming? They were swimming in the pool. They were was doing it their, heated? Had to be, I guess. They're doing laps. It was a full Olympic-sized pool. They were doing, I'm like, doggone, they're out there swimming. It's 38 degrees. Wow. They have, like, caps and goggles on? Like, yeah, they were they exercising. Caps they had caps on. It was wow. just their swim team doing it. Oh, wow. So I'm like, it's crazy. Oh, like, my are, goodness. They've grown tough up here. <laughs> I wouldn't be in a pool at 38 degrees. Hey, but. come uh, come to our swim team. You can train outside. <laughs> Whew, man, yeah, that's, that's not a recruiting pitch that I'd want to oh. be a part of. All right, we're going to have a fun hour. Garrett Nelson, we were trying to get him on last night. Jessica caught up with him yesterday. We just got busy. We had calls. It was great. Good show last night. So we bumped him to tonight. I don't think Garrett's going to mind that he got bumped from 
Monday to Tuesday. I don't think he retweeted it expecting I don't think he tuned in to, to hear not. himself. Probably not. And we're going to hear from softball coach Rhonda Ravel. They've got their fall ball is underway. They'll play Omaha Sunday. I'm going to be calling that with Maddie Fowler Burkhart. Good for you. That'll be so fun. That'll be stream. Really fun. We're streaming that, right? We are. We'll be streaming it on Facebook Live and on the Nebraska softball page and the Nebraska Twitter page. Cool. So you can watch it there. So we're excited. I know they're playing Omaha. I think they're playing South Dakota later in the fall. Maybe Colorado State. Colorado right? State. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So. First chance to see the Huskers. In Missouri. They're, I think Missouri's on the schedule, too. I believe you're right. Uh, it's free. I believe it's free. Yes, it is free. And, and uh, Talking out of my turn here. You'll uh, hear her say it, but once you come out. and yeah. um, Should be know. nice on Sunday. Come out and say it. I think it's a noon start. Double yep, hour. noon, and they put it on a Sunday so that people wouldn't have to worry about a, a football or volleyball uh, conflict, you know, conflict there. Yeah, so the coach will be here in just a little bit. Obviously, the phone lines are always open and available for you at 402 Four one three twenty four hundred hour one. We were talking about how much fun it's been to watch the Manning brothers broadcast Monday Night Football on ESPN two. And we talked about a Husker fix of that. Somebody else tweeted in about the Peters brothers again. You wouldn't hear any of it. It would all get beeped if you put those two guys out there. <laughs> and then somebody goes, "What about the triplets? Turner Gill, Mike Rozier, and Irving Fryer? That'd be cool. Have those three guys come and uh, talk about a football game. That'd be kind of cool." Uh, one guy that's never shy talking is Garrett Nelson, who you caught up with yesterday. Yeah, this is a guy that definitely on the current team would be a, a, probably a fan favorite to get on a broadcast, no doubt about it. Yeah, so he was uh, in a hurry. He was doing a bunch of interviews. He's kind of a media darling. Everybody loves talking to him, and he had to hustle because he had to get to class. So uh, we grabbed him for a few minutes right before then. All right, well, we got to be quick with Garrett because you're going to international finance class. What is that like? Oh, it's a, it's a good time. Uh, it's, it's kind of funny. My brother's actually in the class, so I get to uh, hang out with him and learn about how to do finance internationally. Uh, but it's, it's a good time. You know, I love, I miss going to class with the whole pandemic deal. Mm -hmm. So uh, getting back in the class and seeing people and actually being in person is awesome. All right, well, coming off uh, the game on Saturday, how was practice this morning? It was really good. Um, you know, uh, we obviously did not get the result we wanted, uh, but there's some positives we can take from that. And, you know, we were bumping music, having a good time, um, ready to go, and really excited for this week. Yeah, when you broke down the film and, and saw especially what, how the black shirts did, what, what did you take away from it? Uh, we had too many uh, missed opportunities. We had we left a couple sacks on the on the board and uh, I think three potential picks. So if, you know, t uh, stacking games and doing really well, we need to not miss those opportunities anymore. You talked about uh, building off of it. What what are the positives that you, you took away that you can build off of? We held, you know, uh, Spencer Rattler, and he's a Heisman QB, and they're really good offense, really good explosive offense to 20, how many points was it? 20-something. So, you know, yeah, and it was a record for th th us holding them to, it was like a 60-game record, a 60-game streak of them not scoring so many points or whatever. So that was a positive. Uh, uh, we played... Uh, Effort, all snaps, and that's what you expect from black shirts. So, those those are positive you can uh, take from that. And uh, we had a lot of dudes step up and play really well in those big games. So, it was a blast playing that game. But obviously, you know, super sad we didn't get the result. Second week in a row that Scott Frost made the decision to put the black shirts on the field first. How much do you guys enjoy that? Like that opportunity? Embrace it? Yeah, I love it. It's it's we always want to be on the field all the time. So having that mentality of we want to play as many snaps as we can and be out there as much as we can is uh, kind of what we roll with every week, and we we love it. Now that you're going into, you got one Big Ten game under your belt, but now that you kind of go into it, it is all Big Ten from here on out. Does it change at all this week? No, it's nameless, faceless opponent. You know, we we focus on what we do. Uh, we, we, need, we need to do what we do better than what they do um, and uh, just focus on us, what we're doing, our techniques, uh, how we play, our mentality. And a lot of talk about Michigan State's run game. Do you guys embrace that kind of uh, challenge, especially playing linebacker there in the middle to slow down a, a, a team that's been running the ball very well? Yeah, I found out the dude has like 8.6 yards or something per carry, so sick for him. Uh, obviously, we don't want that on Saturday, so uh, no, we just need to do what we need to do and tackle well, and you know, you can't have eight yards to carry when there's 11 dudes trying to tackle you, so fly, fly to the ball and stop the run and have a good time on Saturday. Yeah, and it seems like, you know, you guys have been preparing so well, uh, the way that, especially the black shirts have played. What, what's the key to that this week, going into this week, that what have you done in the past couple of weeks that you need to carry into this week? Yeah, just, you know, we don't need to change anything. The formula doesn't change because we took an L. Uh, you know, just keep doing what we need to do and uh, keep doing it better than the other team does. 
I said it right. I said he said sick for him. Yeah. Sick for him. Yeah, didn't know until, you know, today that that was the case, but they know that they can't let that happen. How about this? So before we started recording, I was asking him about his major and going to international finance. He said he hated math uh, in high school, hated it. So he's a history major. He loved history. Got to college, started taking history classes, didn't like it, took a calc class, loved it. So then he just changed his mind and went to, so he went from history to finance. How, uh, how are your math skills? Terrible. Oh, Awful. God. Word problems Bad. about ended my life. Yeah. I couldn't get through those things. He would be, if we did a poll of the most popular guys on this team with the fans, he's on there, isn't he? Absolutely. I think you could tell by the starting lineup on the uh, reaction when he they announce him. It's probably the loudest cheer of, of anybody yeah. that they announce. So, um, you know, playing linebacker is kind of a little bit like quarterback. You've got to be smart, got to know everything. You can tell he's a smart guy. But then Jeremiah always talks about, what did they call him? They have a nickname for him because they just he's a little bit kind of crazy too, which you want uh, on the field, just the way he kind of – Reckless abandon a little bit sometimes. Yeah. It just gives it his all. So I think that's fans like to see that, that a, a dude that literally leaves it out there every time he plays. You, you talked about how he's a media darling. He's a quote machine. Yeah. He gives him stuff. You're like, well, that's gold right yeah. there. That's, that's a sound bite for the 10 o'clock news right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you always got to have that guy right on the team that is requested every time, and you, you know that you're going to get the quote that you need, and you're going to get it from Garrett. <laughs> yep, that's right. <laughs> uh, DJ from Kansas on our text lines, what happened to Noah Pola Gates? Thought he was going to be a great defensive player. and No, not a great defensive end rusher. No, he's not. He's a safety is what yeah. Noah Pola Gates is. Noah got hurt in August. He's back now, but he's been on special teams. But, you know, it's, he's behind those six-year safeties in Deontay Williams and Markel Dismuke, and and Miles Farmer has worked his way to be the number three guy. Noah's days are coming. He probably, he had to be one of those guys, Jessica, that when, when Markel and Deontay said we're coming back, probably went, oh, really? Because this yeah. is kind of be my time. That's got to be hard. Yeah, and, and you mentioned it too. I mean, had the penalty last week, but for the most part, those safeties have been playing pretty solid. They have been really good, uh, really good players. I, th I think Deontay Williams would play in the NFL. Yeah. I do. I don't know about Markel, but I think Deontay uh, can't. Good interview there with Garrett. Hey, the Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first. 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time. Shop, finance, and buy online at woodhouse.com. All right, going to step aside, get a break, and come back to some Husker softball. Head coach Ron Ravel will join us next. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today, we're tackling the issue of GMOs or genetically modified organisms. GMOs may sound scary, but they're actually benefiting our environment and consumers. That's because GMO crops help solve specific problems like insects, food waste, and droughts. By selecting good traits from one plant or organism and adding them to another, farmers are safely using science to produce high-quality foods better than ever before. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. The Rural Fellows Program doubled their average number of participating students this year, putting UNL student interns to work in 17 Nebraska communities for the summer. Interns use their skills to get real-world experience on a variety of projects, from mapping out trail systems to creating promotional videos to researching and documenting local history. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. 
The Nebraska FFA is growing leaders and building communities. Together, we are strengthening agriculture. The Nebraska FFA Foundation believes in our future leaders and the communities they serve. We believe in the future of agriculture. Join us in the I Believe in the Future of Ag campaign. Learn more at nefafoundation.org. Brought to you by Aurora Cooperative. Tougher together, Aurora and you. And Frontier Cooperative. Preparation is the key to success on game day. And like your favorite Huskers on the field, you need to be ready right from the opening kickoff. Senex has your pregame routine covered. We've got your salty snacks, your sweet treats, ice cold beverages to wash them down and fresh tanks of propane to fire up the grill. Fuel your fandom at your local Senex station. Husker pride powered locally. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Game On at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont, featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location or check out our full inventory at SidDillonBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. From vintage sneakers to bacon scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare. Advanced Manufacturing, Construction, IT, and Ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Welcome back into our Acres Huskers Radio Broadcast Center. Acres Equipment Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres solution for every field. I'm Jessica Cootie and very excited to be joined by head coach of Nebraska softball, Rhonda Ravel. And hey, you guys are in the middle of fall softball going on right now. You got had an inner squad last week. You got one coming up this week. Uh, how's it going? How's the fall for you? You know what? It's going well. And this is actually game game week because we get to face an opponent on Sunday. So the inner squads are going well. Um, it's just always a great teaching time. The weather's beautiful. We're outside a lot. Sometimes that doesn't happen in January. So it's really nice to be outside on the dirt and just taking advantage of the reps, the game-like reps we're getting. Were you guys able to have fall last year? Yes, but not playing outside competition. We so, just played each other a lot. So this is a great experience. What, what are you looking for? What are you looking to get out of your team in the fall season? You know, really trying to get into a great competitive spirit. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I said last night, we had a Zoom for our parents. I said, uh, we're going to play to win. 
you know, because the more you can see, feel, taste victory early and often, the more it gets in you, and you want it in you by the time you hit spring. And so, you know, but also just really playing with a lot of, you know, attack, attacking, attacking, attacking. And, and that may be more of a mentality sometimes than, you know, when you think of softball, because there's a pause between every pitch. And so it's like, how do you attack everything about it? But um, in a mentality, I believe you can. So you had um, an open scrimmage last Thursday at 345. You'll have another one coming up this Thursday, 345, that's open to the fans. And then Omaha, a doubleheader comes in on Sunday. But uh, before we dive into that, let's go back to last week's. And uh, you had a freshman, your a uh, Ava Breadwell, your freshman, two for three, big day for her. What have you seen out of her? Well, I've seen Ava being Ava. You know, I watched <laughs> her all summer do that all summer. So it was really nice to just see her transition in the box for us and uh, come up in clutch situations. So that's fun for her. And what about, you know, the pitching? You, you had, what, four different pitchers out there. What did you see out of them? Well, you know, here's what I told our director of ops, because she was doing the, the stuff on uh, our social media accounts. The score was deceptive because we started with runners on base every time. Okay. So we started situationally. So when we're starting with runners on second and third or first and second, you kind of expect some runs to cross the board. So I can't even remember the final score, but... I told, I told Aaron this week, we need to put an asterisk. Please note that we're playing situations. So, yeah, I think it was 13 to 6. Yeah. The pitchers did not give up that many no, runs. No, 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 no. In fact, in fact, like Liv Farrell didn't give up an earned run, and she had to pitch out of situations where there were sometimes just one person on base to start, but uh, a couple times two people on base. So the fact that she was able to work out of those pressure situations. And, you know, that's the other thing about the fall. It's like, let's put the pressure on and let us work out of it. Yeah, so... That competition with, you know, having so many people come back and then you're bringing in some newcomers, I, I mean, that's got to be good to, to breed that kind of competition. It makes you better, right? It, it does, and it is. And, you know, last year we had such a big freshman class with eight. This year it's just three, and so it almost feels like a veteran team and that we can hit the ground running. And you're doing a lot of teaching, but it's not... It's not teaching from square one. It's like teaching from this point moving forward. So in the fall, are you looking to kind of set a lineup, or is that something where it'll be open competition? Like, what are you kind of looking for people to maybe separate themselves there? Yes, you, you, you nailed all of it. Okay. Uh, I mean, all of that happens. <laughs> I think, of course, you start to create a depth chart, but yet we're going to continue to compete and continue to practice for several more months before we actually get into our spring season. So there's obviously opportunity to move and and move around so but this is a time to perform against an opponent and anytime you have a chance to perform um, you can do some things to separate yourself so I, I think that's going on as well at the end of last year I know you guys I think you told us in the summer that kind of playing well and and uh, had some good battles did that kind of carry over into you know leading to into what you're seeing kind of this fall Yes, I think so, especially when you have people that play multiple positions. So like right now in our outfield, like Ava Bredwell, you talk about her. She's a catcher, but we've got her playing in the outfield too because she did both in the summer. And so I think that, uh, you know, when you, can, when you can have three or four of your positions that there's healthy competition going on every day, it's a good, it's a good thing to have. And, you know, I'll tell you, our middles are pretty well set. Let's, let's keep them healthy and <laughs> Cami Barra and Billy Andrews uh, and, you know, we've, we've been very fortunate by having a grad transfer in Maya Felder who is doing a really nice job and find herself right in the middle of our hitting lineup, which is great. So we have a lot of nice things going as well. What about uh, Courtney Wallace as well? Uh, the utility did both for you. Is she going to continue to do that? She will, but I'll, I'll tell you her priority is, and as it should be, in the pitching realm. Because, you know, in, in collegiate softball, I used to see all the time a pitcher would start a game and finish a game. And as you, as you watch and look at the co collegiate game now, it's not uncommon. In fact, it's probably more common to have at least two pitchers mm -hmm share a game so she'll she'll be on the mound a lot even if it's not for a full game that's how tough is that to balance you know playing a position hitting because she hit for you guys as well was what your third leading hitter and then also getting in the circle well and that's why the fall so important and not only just from a competitive standpoint on game day but also on practice day how to manage it and then working with our uh, strength and conditioning coach on how to train their bodies to be able to endure it and be at their best when their best is needed. So coming up uh, this Sunday, you got a doubleheader with Omaha. Uh, what, what do you, how do you approach that when you got two games and then also um, you said you're playing to win it, but this won't, you won't have situations going on, right? So is this like a, a normal game? What are you looking for out of your team? 
Yeah, so it is a normal game. The one thing that we usually do in the fall and will continue to do is we have free substitution. So, so some teams will run 10 hitters in a lineup. Some will run nine. You'll have some people that will base run, you know, go in and pinch run five or six times in a game, and that's all good. Um, but what we're looking for is really to establish our pitching. Uh, and what I mean by that is going out and attacking, attacking the strike zone, attacking the hitters, uh, you know, Right from the get-go, because if you talk to our pitchers, they'd probably tell you that if they could change anything about last year, they would have started stronger right from the get-go. And mm -hmm. so we're really focusing a lot on starting strong and finishing strong. Uh, I think the other thing that, you know, because we graduated Tristan Edwards, it's like looking for who's going to step up and step into that role of being a big RBI person. Uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep Billy Andrews right there at the top. Cami Barr had a nice year last year. Uh, you look for Kaylin Kenny, who has a lot of power. Now she's in her second year, feeling a lot more comfortable in her swing. You're going to see a lot of RBIs out of there. And like I mentioned before, Maya Felder uh, is going to be right in the middle of our lineup doing some great things. Cam also had a big day for you uh, on in the inner squad, two for three as well. Uh, do you feel like she could take another step forward and, and uh, have another big season for you? I do. You know, what's really interesting about both Cam and Olivia Farrell is being uh, super seniors, it, you know, taking advantage of the, the COVID extension. Every day, they're just like kids. You know, they're just, they, they feel like they're on borrowed time. They feel like they've been given a gift. And so just the gratitude and the spirit with which they're, coming to practice every day it really rubs off on everybody else so um, it it in some ways just frees them up to just have joy in the game and then again that trickles down to everybody else you had mentioned uh, Maya and I think the last time you were on our show she was gonna maybe commit the next day so we couldn't talk about we her couldn't so, talk about her yeah, yeah so what can fans maybe expect with her you know what? You're you're right. Yeah, I, I couldn't like, say her name. I couldn't, we couldn't say her talk name. about her, but then Good it one. was official the next day. Yeah. So, uh, so we, we haven't got to talk to you right. about it. Right. So Maya comes to us from the University of Oregon, where she graduated in three years. So she actually has two years of eligibility. So yay, Huskers! We get two <laughs> years with Maya. So that'll be great. Awesome. Um, you know, she is a worker. I am. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, and I'd heard that about her, but. Uh, nobody is going to outwork that young woman, and so she has a very, you know, here's the one thing when you get a transfer that's a, already a grad student, they're, they're pretty, they, they know themselves, they know their swings, they, she's known as a hitter, so it's been really fun for Coach Miller, it's a different dialogue than you're having with a freshman, right, so she has a little more mature, mature approach heading in and knows who she is, and so I think, um, you know, what we're going to expect from her, I, it, nothing's going to surprise me, I mean, she, even in scrimmage situations, she's very clutch already. Um, and who's going who's gonna to not love clutch? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so with so many people coming back and then adding Maya and then you have these freshmen, how much do you expect your freshmen to come in and compete for, for some playing time as well? I, I think they all have an opportunity to come in and compete. You know, I, that's the one thing that's never really promised is playing time, that you earn your playing time, and that's a good thing. And it keeps everybody sharp, and it keeps everybody coming to practice with a good focus energy every day. How much, uh, you mentioned earlier about the fall and kind of being able to teach and grow. How much do you enjoy this time and kind of, it's not so much pressure of the games, but kind of really getting it, able to get in there and teach and, and it, it's a different feel, right? It's a really different feel. It's a very different vibe. And you know, you come from a family of educators and all of our coaching staff were trained teachers. And so in many ways, this is our favorite time of year because it's truly a teaching time. So we get to really just roll up our sleeves and be teachers as much or even more than coaches. Okay, so um, again, both of these, the scrimmage on um, Thursday, but then Omaha as well, the doubleheader, will be streaming live, but how much uh, would you guys like to have some fans out we there? We would love to have some fans because we can. Yeah. So because we can, let's do. Yeah, because so last year you didn't get to play in front of fans, right? Not so, in the fall. You'd see people up hiding in the trees, you know, outside <laughs> the fences and stuff. So It's supposed to be beautiful weather, right? Gorgeous. Gorgeous fall weather. So um, you just get in a feel for that, right? A game like Phil would be big for this team, right? It, it'd be great. And we purposely put it on a Sunday so it doesn't interfere with college football or the Huskers playing football. So should be good. All right. Well, uh, Rhonda, we appreciate your time. Can't wait uh, to see you guys out there on Sunday. Thank you, Jessica.
All right, and again, uh, visit a participating Agco dealer between September 20th and November 12th and enter for a chance to win a pair of tickets to the Nebraska Iowa football game on November 26th in Lincoln, plus pregame tailgate. See participating Agco locations across Nebraska and you can win this season. Thanks, Rhonda Ravel. We appreciate your time, and uh, we got more Sports Nightly coming up right after this. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Daves is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get together famous. Award winning and house smoked St. Louis style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit famousdaves.com for all your catering and online ordering needs or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Shop with confidence at Woodhouse Buick GMC and find your next vehicle. Our knowledgeable sales team is eager to help you find a vehicle. Plus, get you on the road faster with our streamlined sales and buying process that you can start online. We have over 100 new Buick and GMC models with the features you want at a smart price. Visit our indoor showroom or shop online anytime at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. Experience the difference and shop Woodhouse Buick GMC first. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. What is HighBid.com? It's the online auction site for just about everything under the sun. Art and antiques, cars and coins, office equipment and furniture, toys and tools. You can find it all at HighBid.com. HighBid.com gives you access to thousands of auctions across the USA and around the world. Browse the most popular auctions, search for the exact item you want, or just explore the site. Go to HighBid.com, that's H-I-B-I-D.com, and find what you're looking for today. Let Shelter Insurance get you in the game this football season. The Nebraska Huskers are gearing up for another big year, and this is your chance to win tickets from Shelter Insurance and the Husker Radio Network. Contact a Nebraska Shelter agent and They'll register you for a chance to win tickets to one of four home football games this season. Only shelter agents can register you, so call, email, or drop by for your chance to win. Find an agent near you at shelterinsurance.com slash huskers and ask them to register you to win. You trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402 413 2400 with your Husker thoughts. Score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. You are what drives us. Chevy, find new roads. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. UNL has been named one of the best schools for veterans for the fifth year in a row. The ranking on the Military Times Best for Vets survey reflects the hard work of Nebraska's Military and Veteran Success Center, serving military dependents, veterans, National Guard members, active duty troops, and many Husker students in the reserves. Double espresso for Matt, large ice mocha for Greg, $2,022 for Katie. Oh, oops. Everybody's mind is on the Nebraska Lottery's Powerball's Rockin' 15 promotion. Until September 25th, buy a Powerball with PowerPlay ticket and enter for a chance to be one of 15 to win $2,022 and a chance to win $1 million. Sorry for the mix-up, Katie. Here's your latte. Forget the coffee. 
Where's my $2,022? Powerball top prize odds, one in 292 million. You always dreamed of owning your own farm. Now you're living your dream, and it's time to pick the tractor that makes it all come together. Massey Ferguson has reinvented what compact and utility tractors can be and redefined what they do, making them easier to operate, more comfortable to drive, more versatile than ever. Massey Ferguson gives Nebraska farmers the power and performance to win in the field. Manzer Equipment in Osmond, Nebraska, your full-time Massey Ferguson dealer. Proud supporters of the Huskers and Nebraska farmers since 1975. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. You train for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance. All without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. We're back inside of our Acres Broadcast Center, Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas, Acres Solutions. For every field, Greg Sharp along with Jessica Cootie. Back with you here on a Tuesday night sports on it. Phone lines are open for you. 402-413-2400. Call or text. We're up on our YouTube chat, our YouTube channel. Our chat room is open in there as well. If you want to get in there and join some Husker fans and kick around some topics of the day. Ever played paintball? No, I have not. I haven't either. Nope. It's a pretty big craze, but I've never done it. Apparently, some Rutgers football players did, uh, and they've been arrested. Wow. Starting corner Max Melton and backup Chris Long have been suspended after being arrested by police for a paintball gun incident on campus Monday night. Apparently, they were driving by a house on campus and pulled off a couple clicks. Of paint. I have, I've been shot by a paintball gun, and it hurts. I bet. I haven't played, like, the actual going to the whatever the the – course or whatever you know where you hide and it's like you know chase the flag or whatever capture the flag type thing i've I've never done that but i have been hit by a paintball gun and it hurts i think the husker football team did it last summer or two summers ago one of those team building things Uh they went out i'm sure those guys love that but yeah this is a big distraction for Rutgers because they're off to a good start they're three and oh they're getting ready to play michigan another three and oh team their big 10 opener this week and now they're down their starting corner and one of their backup corners is out uh, of the game so there you go. I've not played paintball. Yep. I've never got into that either. So that's that was one story. Also, Charlie Brewer is a name that some college football fans might remember. He was the starting quarterback at Baylor two years ago, decided to transfer out, went to Utah. He won the job at Utah in August. The Utes, though, have lost their last two games. They got beat by BYU two weeks ago and then lost to San Diego State the other night. He got benched in the second half of the San Diego State game, and he's gone. And now he, he's leaving. He had some big, pretty big stats at Baylor, right? He, he did. Didn't he play pretty well? Well, yeah. they made the didn't they make the conference title game and Oklahoma beat him in the championship? Yeah, that game. was yeah. He got a concussion, I yep. think, in that okay. championship game. I couldn't remember uh, when he was there, but I knew he was he played for a good team that Baylor had. So um, does that make any sense, though? I mean, you transfer, you you win the job, you're not playing very well. Your team is losing. They change quarterbacks. And then you bolt? Yeah, I, I it was pretty wondered. bad. I mean, if he was trying to go to try to make it to the NFL, that looks really bad. He's not making a team after that. You know, where's he going now? What do you do now? I mean, I, I mean, I get you're disappointed that you've been benched, but your team's losing. You're not moving the football. I mean, you got to kind of expect that a little bit, I would think. Yeah, I mean, and I, I don't know what year is he. He's a senior. It's got to be, got to be his last year. I would yeah, think. so uh, I guess he's done playing football then. Those stories disappoint me, and, and it makes me appreciate guys like a Matt Sichterman, who you talked to a few weeks ago, who hadn't played a lot here. He was on the punt team where he would be the shield in front of the punter, but he wasn't getting snaps. But he hung in there and he hung in there. Now he's starting. I just love those kids and those stories. Yeah, and and Matt said that, and a lot of 
there was a lot kind of surrounding that, and obviously he's really, really smart, software engineering. He's working at Huddle. Uh, he wanted to get his degree from here, and um, but he also said a big part of it is that, you know, I, I wanted to play here, and I wanted to stick it out and, you know, prove that what I stuck around for was worth it, and it was all worth it to him. It was very rewarding, I feel like, for someone like him that, earn that job and and you know put in his time and he's been such a big leader for that room um you know Cam Jurgens has said that in the summer when I talked to him about how Matt Sichterman has really kind of stepped up and took some of those younger guys and he was kind of working out with guys that could potentially could take his spot and so you know just the way he's handled his business is really impressive Matt met with the media today and had a quote he said Cam Jurgens is showing all of us how tough you need to be in this game and I think that's why I don't mind those penalties at all. Last week. One, I think, was a terrible call, but I like that aggressiveness. I mean, I, I said it last night. I do not think they were mad about that one. They were mad about the false starts. They were mad about some of the other ones, but they kind of liked that, that, you know, it, it fired, fired the guys up and kind of, you know, asserted some dominance and, hey, you're not going to push us around. And, uh, you know, so I don't mind it. I mean, I, I think most, as we heard Coach Frost say yesterday, what was giddy up than pull back? We'd yeah, rather I'd tell him. Sure. Tell him to giddy whoa. up and whoa, yeah. yeah, whoa. I couldn't remember what the second word was. But, yeah, you would re much rather than be way too aggressive than not aggressive enough. And I remember talking to Coach Austin this summer, and I go, who, who needs to get meaner? And he goes, all of them, all <laughs> of them. So, you know, deep down he was grinning with that. You were down on the sidelines in Norman. Did somebody wipe out our medical tent? Did I hear that? It was a, it was a case. So it was, it was Gabe Irvin before he uh, got hurt. He hit it hard and Did bounced he? right back up. Yeah, because there's not there's not a lot of room on that side. Yeah, there. no. So he ran into the um, the case thing. It wasn't the tin. It was the okay. case that was sitting on the side, and there was a trash can behind it. The trash can, it, it's done. The trash can Just demolished. Yeah, it was completely <laughs> bent. It looked like it had been through a tornado. That trash can had seen better days. The case went all the way over. They had to flip it back over. But boy, he just bounced right back up like nothing. So that didn't hurt him, but making a cut yeah. in the middle of the field where the knee blows. Yep. How about that? Because I was kind of worried because it was right around the same time Austin Allen had gone down, and I was like, okay, we might have two injuries, but he bounced right back up. But he hit it hard for sure. Oh, that wow. side, that's kind of a little bit worrisome. Again, when I was at Oklahoma, I think it was it was Sterling Shepard's senior year, which we've seen what Sterling Shepard has done with the Giants. Mm -hmm. He ran into a camera guy and got pretty hurt. Um, it was like a, a photographer that yeah. was on the sideline. It's just so tight, and there's nowhere to slow down. You see a lot of guys going into the sidelines. There's some scuffles when that happens, and it's just it can be pretty dangerous. Well, and there's no padding on those walls. No. Isn't it brick? Yeah, it's, it's straight brick. Yep. So you're running in literally running into a brick wall yep there. it's it's not ideal and as i mentioned the the st the fans kind of hanging over and they had to get some extra security you said i was kind of like that right or who, wh well michigan state's tight too but the fans are a little bit more elevated there's not because in oklahoma those fans on the first row cannot see over people there's no way no. Michigan State's fairly tight, but people get a little bit. Nebraska Tech took their ban back in 2012 their first time we went up there as a member of the league and the band had to just scrunch into this one little corner on the field. I mean, they were, I don't know, they, I don't know how they all fit down there, but they were all jammed into this one little corner. Yeah, it's kind of makes you think about, I guess, if how a stadium's built. I guess maybe, you know, again, that stadium's been there for so long, maybe don't take that into consideration. What? We have a ton of room here. Yeah, you do. Yeah. It's really a lot. Turn yep. on, on the um, east side. On the line. home side, yeah. Yep. Lots of room over there. And there's a lot of people usually down there, a lot of recruits from other schools. Uh, sports and I know Will Bolt had a whole bunch of guys there for the Buffalo game two weeks ago. Coach Ravel was saying earlier that they had a couple recruits in I'm and they'll sure. have a big weekend coming up. That Northwestern game is going to be oh massive boy. for recruiting for all sports. Hoops. Yeah. A lot of hoops. A lot of I think volleyball, softball, everybody. She was saying that how, you know, they plan their recruiting trips around the football calendar. So you have to. Yeah. You have to show them what the spirit of the campus is. It's a great recruiting tool. But for basketball, for them to all take them to Andrew's guy, G. Herbo, on Friday night, go see him. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, that's going to be a huge weekend. Um, back to, I was going to say one more thing about the sidelines, about, you know, I've had some people ask me about why Nebraska is on that sidelines, mm -hmm. the room for sure. But Jeremiah was also saying when it gets colder, it's also better to be in the sun. You're in the sun. Yeah. Yeah. So you sweat in September. 
So you deal with that, but you get to November when it's bitter cold because that east, this west sideline would be in the shade in a hurry. Hey, Nebraska 811 says go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free, it's easy, and it's the law. 402-413-2400, the number to dot us up with a comment or question. More Sports Nightly coming up. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name, too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you with a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. At Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. Double espresso for Matt, large ice mocha for Greg, $2,022 for Katie. Oh, oops. Everybody's mind is on the Nebraska Lottery's Powerball's Rockin' 15 promotion. Until September 25th, buy a Powerball with PowerPlay ticket and enter for a chance to be one of 15 to win $2,022 and a chance to win $1 million. Sorry for the mix-up, Katie. Here's your latte. Forget the coffee. Where's my $2,022? Powerball top prize odds, one in 292 million. Finally, it's time to tailgate, to find your spot in a sea of red, to get together with family and fans, and to share what makes Husker football season the best. This season, share Valentino's tailgater tradition with their big red double jumbo deal and get two one-topping jumbo pizzas for only $17.79 each. Order yours at Valentino's.com. Some restrictions apply. See store for details. Valentino's, the official pizza of the Huskers. Go Big Red! Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next-level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today's topic, animal agriculture. There's been a lot of talk suggesting that giving up meat is good for the environment. However, livestock emissions only account for less than 4% of greenhouse gas emissions, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Also, by reducing meat in your diet, you're missing out on all sorts of beneficial nutrients like protein, iron, and zinc. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. Buckle up with that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you. 402-413-2400. On our text line, Stephen Bellevue, paintball is a blast. Husker paintball, south of Plattsmouth. 30 of us spent over $700. No one left without welts. <laughs> Wear a parka. Maybe a team building for Huskers Radio Network? <laughs> nope. I'm out. Uh, me too. <laughs> Jeremiah would probably dominate that. Oh, he would love it. I mean, yeah. that's where he was last week. He was out hunting. That's oh, yeah, he, he called me and was, like, trying not to scare off the elk. And he's like, hey, I need an update. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to give him a hard time. He said a lot of people, I've had a lot of people ask me about why he wasn't there. And he's been hunting. Yeah, hunting. I mean, what else you say? It's what he was like, doing. It, like, like, I'm lying. But, you know, it's it's one of those things where he's been playing football for so long. Yeah. He hasn't been able to do that with his dad. And, you know, you never know. He wanted to be able to take advantage of that time. So I, I totally get it, but people were definitely doubting me when I said that he's hunting. Yeah, I, I, people <laughs> like, yeah, they don't believe you. Hey, I want to brag on Husker women's golf. They went down to Manhattan and swept titles at the Maryland Smith Sunflower Invitational. Tim told you about it in the ticker. I don't know how Nebraska decided to, 
to divvy up their team. They, they entered two teams, an A and a B. The B won it. The B team won the tournament today, and this was a decent field of schools that they beat. They beat both Kansas schools, Kansas, Kansas State. Uh, they beat Tulane, Wichita State, Toledo, Incarnate Word, Sam Houston State, all in the field. Nicole Hansen, the low medalist, she shot a three over par for a 54-hole event, and uh, Lindsey Thiel from Wahoo finished second. Well, they actually they were tied. They both finished at uh, three over par uh, for their two two uh, tournaments. And uh, Mia Takahashi, who is a freshman from Japan, she had a 68. Uh, one of her three rounds that she had, she ended up finishing in a tie for fifth. So Oscar women's golf making a little bit of noise. It, it has been a long time since they have won a tournament, so that's good for them. That's fan that wrapped up earlier today down in Manhattan. That's cool. I've always heard how important, again, the fall season. We heard Coach Ravel talking about it, but for golf, too, it's really, really important the fall season to set up for what is done in the spring. So the fact that you perform well in the fall can, can be huge for what you want to try to do in the spring. Coach Johnson doing a really good job with that, that program. Uh, on our text line, why was Troy Aikman at the NUOU game? Was he? I didn't see him. I didn't see him. I would kind of doubt that he was but it was this, this guy because well, he would have been at a game on sunday i mean well he did the thursday night game and then yeah he would have been at a game for sunday i don't think that was troy Aikman. maybe he was and i missed him i didn't see him yeah i i don't think so i well and he did play a couple years at oklahoma he transferred to ucla oklahoma is where the two schools he played college football at so he does have a tie to oklahoma but i don't remember seeing him there ucla claims uh troy Aikman. well it's where he did more of yeah. his damage was at ucla than at oklahoma but i don't and maybe maybe i missed him so if i apologize if i'm wrong but i did not see troy they honored a couple people on the big screen abraham answer a professional golfer uh went to oklahoma he won a big tournament here in the last couple of months so he was uh, they honored him out there on the field and bob stoops going into the college football hall of fame in december he got a big ovation he was there with a the fox pregame show we're going to do something similar here in a week or so with Eric Crouch, who's going in the Hall of Fame here, same time as Bob Stoops. I bet they, they'll tell some fun stories because Bob Stoops battled it out with Eric Crouch they for did. a few years. Yeah, they did. Uh, yeah, you know, the, they'll be off to the side having some fun conversations with that. And, you know, Jessica now knows Johnny Rogers, so you'll see Johnny everywhere now. I mean, I it. am, I told you, I'm the weekend winner. He was just awesome to talk to. What a great personality. You told me, and I, I mean, it's not that I doubted you, but it was even better than my expectations. He was awesome. He's great. Two more texts says he was there. He was out with Barry Switzer in the middle, middle of the field. So wow. I missed him. I, again, I apologize. I didn't see him, but he does have a tie to Oklahoma football because he went to school there for a while. So that's why he was there. Yeah. Was so, there. cause I think it was Jamel Holloway, right? Uh, Troy Edmond went down and Jamel Holloway came in and then they ended up winning the national title right. that year. Right. So, um, Troy Aikman, I think it, he broke his leg, I believe. And Got so, hurt, and then, yeah. It, I think the it, it was Don, and then Jamel Holloway came in. But, um, okay, so I guess he was. I didn't see him, but I, I was either. immersed in uh, trying to listen in on team huddles. Man, so. we're just getting hammered. Everybody's texting. He was there. He was there. He was there. We got it. He was there. We got, got it. it. Okay. <laughs> Good. You guys, you got it. You got it. <laughs> uh, he was, uh, I guess, probably standing on the Oklahoma sideline. I, I didn't see him, but... Yeah. Hey, buckle up and put that phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Tomorrow night, uh, we have a 90-minute show. Husker Volleyball begins Big Ten play as they are in Evanston to take on the Northwestern Wildcats. It's an 8 o'clock first serve. Pre-game coverage begins at 7.30, so you have us for 90 minutes tomorrow night. Our coaches' shows will both be on Thursday. John Cook will be in the 6 o'clock hour. And then Barrett Root, Husker inside linebackers coach, will be our football coach for the football show this week. He will be in hour number two on Thursday, as of the next couple of days here uh, on Sports Island. Saw a couple of social posts about the basketball event next Friday night. Still, it, it's free to go, but they do want to get you a ticket so that you have a place to sit to watch G. Herbo. It's going to be a great chance to go see and put names to faces for all the new players on both the men's and women's teams. Yeah, they're excited about it. And again, a huge recruiting weekend. And so you want to show up and have the crowd there inside PBA before the concert so that, you know, these recruits get a feel for, for what it's like in there. Absolutely. Good show tonight. Thanks to Jessica, to Tim, to Mike, to all of you for being a part of this one. Good night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Woohoo!
Business Technology 1, Network Downtime 0. Being a game-winning IT network takes hard work and an experienced technology coach. That's why our game plan includes Marco. Marco helps our entire business infrastructure perform better and score big day in and day out. With Marco's veteran experience guiding our team, every season is a winning season. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team www.iowaworks.gov. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Dave's is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDaves.com for all your catering and online ordering needs or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue.